Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating coloured smoke in Photoshop. Not only coloured smoke on a black background, but coloured smoke that could also be on a white background. So I'm going to start here with this image that I found on unsplash.com. There are lots of smoke images on unsplash.com, so just go and find something that looks like it's been photographed against black and has white smoke. Download it and open it up in Photoshop. Now this video was prompted by a question that was in a Facebook group that I'm part of and somebody had the smoke image already colored, but they wanted to remove it from black and make it white. I'm going to show you how to do that, but I'm also going to show you how I would color the smoke. So let's start with this image. My suspicion is that while this background looks like it's black, it may not be perfectly black and we want it to be perfectly black. So I'm just going to click here to unlock this so that it's a regular layer and I'm going to make the background perfectly black. Now you can do this using curves. I'm just going to use levels because it's just fine to use levels here. I'll choose image and then adjustments and go to levels. In the levels, we're seeing the blacks in the image over here and the whites in the image over here. And we just want to make sure that these really are black and a lot of these are black. So I'm just going to bring this in just a little bit. And that's going to darken up the gray pixels that are sort of potentially in these areas of the image, just so that I can get a selection of the white. So I think this is pretty good, maybe around six for this particular image. Your image may vary. I'm just going to click OK. The next thing is that we need to select this white area. And if you went to a selection tool, you'd find that this is just going to be an unmitigated disaster. You can't select this easily using any of the typical tools in Photoshop, but you can select it using channels. Let's go quickly across to the channels panel, which of course you can get to by choosing window and then channels. In the channels, basically what we're seeing is the exact same image as we're seeing on the screen. The thing about channels is that we can actually make a selection in here. So what I'm going to do is go to the RGB channel here. I'm going to hold down the control key, that's command on the Mac, and just click once on this. And what I've done is made a selection of the non-black pixels in the image. Now you can see that it looks like I've made a selection that doesn't include these other white areas, and maybe this is like a really poor selection. That's not the case. The only thing that we're seeing the marching ants around are the areas where the white is thickest, if you like, deepest white. But these other areas that are sort of semi-transparent, because they're not 50% or more, they're not being shown, but they are selected. So just ignore the marching ants. They're not really helping you at this point, except to sort of reinforce that you do have some selection there. Let's go back to the layers panel. We're going to add a brand new layer. So just a new empty layer. And we're going to fill it with white because we have a selection in place. When we fill it with white, what we're going to do is just fill the selection with white. The areas that are not selected, which are all the black areas, will not be filled. So we'll go to Edit and then Fill and just go straight across here to Contents and just select White and click OK. So that's sort of going to double up the ante if you like. You're going to see a more intense smoke. The reason is that you've got white smoke which is in part transparent on top of more white smoke and you're just building up the effect. If you turn off the original layer, you're going to see what you have here, which is white smoke, which is really difficult to see. So let's actually go and add a black filled layer. I've got a new layer here. I'm going to fill it with black. I'm going to move it underneath the smoke my smoke layer, my manufactured smoke layer if you like, and above the original image you can see now that I've got smoke. <laughs> I've got smoke but I've isolated it because my smoke is all on a layer all by itself. So let's just go and see, this was the original and this is my smoke. So once I've got smoke isolated on a layer then I can do things with it and one of the things that I can do is make it colored. For this, I'm going to add another layer to my document at the very top because I want to color in this layer. So I want to add color. At this stage, I'm just going to go drop a gradient into it, just a colored gradient. I happen to select this color gradient. doesn't really matter what you drag into it. I'm also going to adjust my gradient. Now, you could do all sorts of things at this point. One thing you could do is go to get a paintbrush 
sample the color from the image by pressing the Alt key option on the Mac as you sample the color and then just go paint it into the image. So you could go and break this up by adding color sampled from the image. Another thing you could do is go and use a filter. For example, go to the distort filters and choose something like twirl or wave. I'm just going to add a twirl to this. Whatever you do, you basically want to break up the gradient and just make it more interesting. Now, to apply it to our smoke, we're going to add what's called a clipping mask. So what we're going to do is say to Photoshop, you know where we've got contents on this layer below. We only want to see this layer where those contents show up. So in the areas where there is no content, in other words, where the black was originally, we don't want to see this color. Really simple way of adding color to our smoke. I'm going to select this topmost layer. You can do a clipping layer by choosing that layer. Choose layer and then create clipping mask. You can also create a clipping mask over here in the layers panel. Just position your mouse pointer over the join between the two layers, making sure that you've got the color layer selected. Hold down the Control and Alt keys. That's Command and Option on the Mac. You get this little indicator here, this little box with an arrow. Click once and you're creating your clipping mask. And so now we have colored smoke and then you can start working with the color layer to get the result that you want. You may want to do something like smudging it. Let's go and get the smudge tool here. Here's the smudge tool. So on the paint layer with the smudge tool, I can start pushing around these colors. I don't have a very good brush here for that. Let me go and get a nice soft brush and just start pushing the colors, smudging the colors around so that you can improve or break up this color layer in an interesting way so that you get different colored smoke. You can actually see my smoke is moving because there's actually a delay on the smooth tool. It's a really slow tool. So once you start pushing it around, you might actually see your smoke is moving. Now, I promised you in the beginning that we would have colored smoke on a white or a black background. Well, we've got a black background because that's what we added here. Let's go and add a brand new layer. Let's place it underneath the smoke because this is the smoke here. This is the color that the smoke is colored with. This is our new empty layer. I've got white as my foreground color. I'll press Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac to fill that layer with white. You can fill it with white however you like to fill with white. I just happen to use this as a preference. So now we've got colored smoke on either a white background or a black background, or we could put it on any colored background. You can also, of course, change this color. If you like the sort of effect that you've got, but you're not happy with the colors, then just go put a hue saturation adjustment over the top layer. New adjustment layer, hue saturation. It's going to be clipped and now you can just start wandering this around and get a different color selection. So we're taking all the colors with us at this point. So you might find color bands or color arrangements here that you like better than the one that you had, but still using this sort of basic design that you've got. You can also adjust the saturation. Well, I've got the saturation wound right up here on this. You can adjust the lightness as well. So there you have it, making colored smoke in Photoshop. The first thing that we have to do, of course, is to extract the smoke. Make sure that your background is perfectly black before you do it, and then go into the channels palette. Control or Command click on the RGB layer to get that luminance selection, and then go and fill a layer with it, and that will give you extracted smoke. So that we're working with basically manufactured smoke. We've used the selection from the original smoke layer, filled it with white to manufacture our own version of smoke, which we can then control because we've got really lovely transparency through the background of this image. You can see when I turn on just the black background and our smoke layer, how beautiful our smoke layer is. It's just beautifully transparent in there and you're just not going to be able to make a selection like that easily if you don't use that channels palette option. Now in this video, of course, I have just been using black and white as a background for our smoke, but you could use any color 
to do this, you'll just go and place yourself immediately underneath the smoke layer. So here's our smoke layer. Just position yourself immediately under it and choose layer, new fill layer and choose solid color. Click OK. This adds a new solid color layer. And the benefit of using this tool, this fill option, is that you can now start just selecting the color you want to use. I'm using my color picker set up this way. I get to it by just clicking on the H here. If you choose S or B, you're going to get a different sort of color picker. I'm just using the H one where we're focusing on hue. So I can go and choose any color that I like as a background and that will be in that new fill layer. The beauty of this fill layer is it's editable too. You can just click on it to reopen the color picker and go and find another color as your background. So you can choose light or dark. It's up to you. If you enjoyed this video, then the good news is I have a lot more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine will be better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family, friends and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.